Hello students, welcome to Learners Planet. Uh, we are going to discuss about the another process here that is a mechanism of respiration in human beings. Uh, students generally find difficulties in learning the processes, isn't it? This respiration is of course an important uh, process which is required for the survival of the living organisms, isn't it? So this respiration is what? It is the uh, oxidation of food material that is glucose into carbon dioxide and water by using oxygen and producing the energy. Right. So the respiration is concerned with basic phenomena or basic processes that is exchange of gases that is intake of uh, inhalation of the oxygen and exhalation of the uh, carbon dioxide. Secondly, this oxygen which is inhaled inside is used up for the uh, oxidation of food material. Isn't it? So there are these phases over there. So uh, usually what happens, we get confused in respiration and the breathing process. Breathing is simply the exchange of the, uh, of this, uh, uh, I'm sorry, of the oxygen and carbon dioxide. So basically it is a physical process whereas the respiration is a biochemical process and it involves each and every cell of the body. So how this oxygen is taken inside the body and is then utilized for the oxidation of food and the production of the energy rich molecules. We are going to summarize this basic thing in a very simple way through a particular uh, flow chart. So students uh, see. If you want to understand the basics uh, or you want to learn the processes in biology in a very easy way then the, actually the diagrams are very helpful. Beside, the help, uh, beside this um, of, uh, diagrams you can practice uh, uh, to make these flowcharts. You know this thing very well if you are following the things by using the flowcharts the things become quite easy to learn. And that is why we are making these flowcharts for you guys. Fine. So let us see here that how this mechanism of respiration occurs in human beings. Well, this uh, respiration is divided into two phases that is inspiration and the expiration. Inspiration means uh, uh, utilizing the inhaled air for the oxidation of glucose. Right? Now, uh, for the uh, oxidation, when this oxidation is taking place, there is a release of carbon dioxide and that carbon dioxide is released out from the body. So this second phase when the release of this carbon dioxide is, uh, uh, it is uh, expired out of the body or it is exhaled out of the body, uh, that phase is known as the expiration. Right? So how it occurs? See, inspiration in that case, the fresh air from our surroundings uh, in from the environment it is inhaled right so it is uh, it is taken inside through the breathing process now how the breathing occurs that we have discussed earlier initially there is a contraction of the uh, muscles which are associated with the ribs as well as with the uh, uh, with the uh, diaphragm so this type of contraction of these particular structures increases the thoracic cavity and thus the air is filled inside the alveoli resulting in the swelling up or expanding of the lungs so this is how air is now taken inside the lungs from where uh, through from the surrounding through the nostrils now after this air has filled inside the alveoli now what will happen see alveoli is having a thin surface right the membrane is very thin over there and this thin surface is actually helping in the exchange of the gases over there right so in this case the oxygen which is present in high concentration in the inhaled air it tends to diffuse inside into the blood capillaries. See that this is the uh, the presence of these blood capillaries is the next advantage uh, for making the process of absorption or diffusion uh, a very easy thing, right? So these alveoli they are having thin surface and of course they are supplied with the blood capillaries. So oxygen which is present inside it crosses these uh, uh, membranes of the alveoli as well as the blood capillaries and then it enters inside the blood. Now oxygen is not soluble in the blood. So now what happens? It is going to need a transporter. 
right so that transportation is actually uh, performed by the pigment present inside the blood over the red blood cells which we call as hemoglobin so this hemoglobin is going to attach to the oxygen and further it is going to carry this uh, oxygen to the target cells we can say all throughout our body in each and every cell of the body so further after this binding the uh, blood is transported to the different target site as it reaches the particular target site in a tissue or over or nearby the cells what will happen there the oxygen which is present inside the blood vessels it tends to diffuse out in the tissue fluid and of course this uh, from here uh, the, from the tissue fluid which is present in the spaces between these cells the uh, this uh, oxygen tends to uh, move inside the cell fine after reaching inside the cell uh, or uh, after diffusing inside the cell it will participate in the process of the oxidation over there during this process the oxidation of food is going to take place how it is in different phases initially the glucose is uh, uh, converted into the pyruvate in the uh, cytoplasm and after that the pyruvate is going to i'm sorry Uh, this pyruvate is going to part, uh, reach the mitochondria and part, uh, it is uh, uh, entering into the another cycle known as the krebs cycle and in this krebs cycle this pyruvate is going to convert into the carbon dioxide and water by using the oxygen so this is how this glucose is completely oxidized to carbon dioxide and water in several cycles in several steps now once this carbon uh, this type of conversion is taking place sidewise the energy which is released that is going to be stored inside the cell in the form of atp and this left out carbon dioxide now it has to be removed out from the body so now it is present in the cell of your body from here it is going to diffuse out see now the carbon concentration of carbon dioxide is high inside the cell isn't it and it is less in the tissue fluid so definitely this carbon dioxide it tends to move from the region of its high concentration to the region of its low concentration and this is how the carbon dioxide is diffused out into the tissue fluid tissue fluid over there the blood capillaries were present right so from tissue fluid the carbon dioxide will uh, go into the or it will diffuse into the uh, blood right inside the capillaries and from here it is carried uh, along with the blood it is soluble over there so it is carried out as such without the help of any pigment over there or any uh, transporter over there and is taken up and uh, transported to the lungs now this transportation to lungs it occurs through the heart right the blood is circulated to with the uh, with the uh, with the help of the or the functioning of the heart so this heart is going to help in the transportation of this carbon dioxide containing blood to the lungs in the lungs it is diffused back into the alveoli and from alveoli uh, during the exhalation process the carbon dioxide is pushed out from the nostrils into the environment now what happens here in exhalation there is a relaxation of these contracted muscles which were associated with what with the ribs and or and the uh, diaphragm so as they relaxes they exert pressure over the lungs and the filled air inside the alveoli tends to uh, move out from the body so you can see that this breathing and this oxidation it occurs simultaneously it occurs hand in hand and this is how the mechanism of respiration takes place in the human beings so uh, whenever you are studying your subjects this is my suggestion to you all that go through flow charts you try to make these flow charts you summarize the entire process uh, in some uh, flow charts or in key points and this is of course going to help you in learning the processes very easily and by heart so this is uh, for now and further we will come back with some other session with some other difficulty and solution of those uh, difficulties till then goodbye